Hello everyone and welcome. My name's Mr. Jurius and we're doing another Minecraft tutorial today. As you can obviously see from the thumbnail, we're doing animated textures and emissive textures. Now animated textures, that's fairly obvious. It's a texture that has an animation between different image frames. An emissive texture, what does that actually mean? To clear up the term emissive, it doesn't actually emit any light into the world in Minecraft. What it does is whatever texture has been set to be emissive will remain at a light level of 15. To show an example of this, I thought I would jump onto my server. So here we are in Omniville, and as you can see, I've got my fancy looking animated Christmas lights. We've got these large ones here, and inside my little shop here we have all the small ones, the string lights. If you'd like to pick up this pack for yourself or any of my other packs, check the title card, it should be popping out just now, and you can find a little trailer there which will lead to the download links. Now as I said about emissive textures, they stay at light level 15, but they don't actually admit any light themselves. To show an example of that, I'm just going to walk forward here, and you can see in the distance there, there's a little flashing bulb. If I just walk into the dark spooky cave, you'll see I've placed one of my baubles here. And you'll see that it's the only thing in here that's actually bright, and there's no light being emitted from it. Now if you're wondering why I said emissive textures stay at light level 15, but this one is flashing, that's because this is a combination of animated textures and emissive light. So let me show you how this works. Right, here we are in Blockbench, here is my red bobble that we just saw in game. And if you have a look down here on the bottom left, you'll see I've got red bobble PNG, which is the texture, and you'll see that it's got this little film clip on it. As the pop-out suggests, it's an animated texture, and if I click this little play button, you'll see that the texture is animating. Hold on a second here, Mr. X. The animation in game looked a lot smoother than this. Yes, that's right, Mr. or Mrs. Viewer, it did. So first of all, let me show you what an animated texture file actually looks like, and then we'll show you the properties and how to change them. So here's my Christmas decorations folder full of all my baubles and their animations. So I've got my texture here in Photoshop, and let's just break this down a bit. So the top part of this texture file here, which is normally what you'd see for a standard texture, this is considered frame zero of the animation. This is where it would start. Then working its way down, we have frame one, frame two, and then frame three. So what this means is that Minecraft will take the top segment here and use it as an animated frame, then move on to the one below it, and so on and so forth. So if I were to make a copy of this frame here and move it down here, then say I wanted to make this one greenish, and then do it again, bring this one down here, make this one, there's a, a nice pinkish colour. Grab this one, and then just change it again. There you go, nice blue. Some very nice colours. So what would happen in this case is it would start from frame zero, the red colour, go to frame one, which is the green, frame two, the pinky purple, and then frame three, the blue. But how do you actually make it do this? So back to my Christmas folder here, and you'll see that we've got all these notepad files as well. So I'm just going to click on this one here. This one's called redbobble.png.mcmeta. Now it's very important that you remember that. Let's open it up. And here we have the properties file for the animation. And as always, this pack will be in the description below if you want to download it and have a look. Alternatively, as I said earlier in the video, you can also download my Christmas pack if you want to use it or play around with it. And you'll find all these files in there as well. So there's only three parts of this we really need to cover. Interpolate. Interpolate is the setting that makes the frames blend together. So you remember in game we had a smoother animation where it flowed from one frame to another? If you want your animation to do that, you want to set interpolate to true. Otherwise, it would just look like this, where it flips between the frames. Frame time, this is the amount of time in ticks that each frame is rendered. So it'll render each frame for five ticks before moving on to the next or it will be the time it takes to blend between them if interpolate is set to true. So let's have a look at the settings file here and the animation side by side. So if you recall, the top frame is frame 0, the next frame is frame 1, frame 2, frame 3. Now that is how it would work if you did not specify this. This is the frame's order. Now rather than it going 0, 1, 2, 3, and then what would happen is it would go straight back to 0, I have added a little bit of an animation to this where it starts at zero, which would be red, one, green, two, purple, three, blue, and then two again, back to purple, and then one, back to green. And then from this point, the next frame it will choose will be the one back at the top. But going back to my actual texture here, what we have is different shades of red. So instead of it changing colors, it changes brightness or shade of red. 
So we have very bright, slightly darker, even more dark, and then we have a really dark one. And then what it does is it comes back up to this one in here, then this one, and then the whole animation resets and it does it all over again from the top. So I'm just going to grab one of my other animations here, so let's grab the yellow one. So these are all very, very similar, but there's one distinct difference in that the frame animations start from different positions. So the reason why I've done this is because I wanted my bobbles to have offset animations so that they all flashed and animated at different times. So rather than starting at frame 0 at the top, this one starts at 3 and then goes to 2, 1, 0 and then back to 1, 2 and then because it starts on 3, we just want it to reset which will go back to the top. If I had another 3 down here like this, it would then go to this for a frame time of 5 and then back to top again for a frame time of 5 so you'd have a doubling. So I don't think I actually mentioned this, but this isn't actually an Optifine animation we're doing. This is just a default Minecraft animation. And I've got the webpage right here. So I'm on the, the Minecraft Gamepedia and there's a bunch of tutorials on here you should probably have a look at. And this one in particular, creating a resource pack, we have got this part here where it talks about animation properties. And you can see it looks very similar to what I've just shown you. And if you're looking for the simplest form of animation possible, you'll note this little part right here where it says all you need to make a texture animated is the following code. That will make each frame last only one frame. And there's the code there if you want it. Don't worry, I'll put a link to this in the description as always so you can have a look at this. But there's tons of stuff on this site. If you haven't already looked at this, it shows you all about... Well, all about everything really, about making textures and stuff. I can't comment on how up-to-date this is, but the animation part definitely works. Right, back in my Christmas folder here. And you remember this file I pointed out earlier? The MC Meta file? So I just want to discuss the actual name of this file here, so I'm just pointing out the, the name at the top here on Notepad. So the name of this file has to match the file name of your animation image exactly. So you'll see that I've got my bluebobble.png and then I've got bluebobble.png here and then .mc Meta. Now this is extremely important because if you do not do this, this file will not link to this animation here and it just will not work. If you're having any issues with renaming the files or you don't see the file extensions, on Windows 10 you can go up here to Options under the View tab and then View and then there's an option right here that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types. You want to make sure that's disabled and then you can edit the file type exactly by just renaming this here. So let's move on to Emissive Textures. So Emissive Textures is actually fairly simple. The first thing you need, which is 100% essential, is this Emissive.properties file. So you can see that I've got this in my resource pack, Assets, Minecraft, Optifine, and then it's just sitting here. And let's just open this up. And here you can see what's in this file. So this is just telling Optifine the suffix that I want to use to define an Emissive Texture, this is underscore E. So anytime you do something like this, where you've got texture dot underscore E, not three, E, this is you telling Optifine, this is an emissive texture. Although it's a very simple file, this is 100% essential and make sure you don't forget to use this. So now that you know that, we're back in the Christmas folder here and you can probably now see why I have two versions of each of these textures. I've got blue bobble and blue bobble underscore E. And I have the same for every single one of these textures here. So this is a combination of the MC Meta file, which creates an animation out of this texture, and then the Bobble Emissive texture here, and an additional MC Meta animation file for the Emissive part. In the case of the Emissive and non-Emissive textures, these are exactly the same though. So let's have a look at a texture that is not animated but is Emissive so you can see the difference. So here we have one of my Christmas zombie variants. If you're interested in seeing how I added these additional parts to the zombie and how the texturing and UV maps works, you can check the rest of my series because I've covered all of this already. Lucky you! Anyway, the emissive part of this, well, there is no emissive part of this part right here. You would think this eye here would be emissive given that it's a bright green colour, but the emissive texture is actually right here. Hold on. Right here. Wait, hold on, hold on. There you go, right there. Those two little green eyes. Now the way this is set up is that if I just open this file here, zoom in. So what's happening here is that the base zombie texture here, this, is being rendered on the model and then the emissive texture is being rendered on top of that. And only the parts inside this file here will be emissive and rendered at light level 15, whereas the rest of the zombie will just be at the normal light level, which gives you a nice spooky looking eye glow. I forgot about this guy. <laughs> this is my three-headed, well, now nine-headed creeper. 
added a bunch of JPM or JSON part models to him. I was planning on making a video of JPMs, but to be honest with you, functionally they don't seem to be any better than just making a, a full model file. But maybe if in the future it gets an update and we can do some more interesting things with JPMs, I might come back to it. This guy does not want to look at me. So if I spawn in some zombies, you can immediately see how much these eyes stand out. So even though the ripped variant of the zombie has a black eye where the present is ripped, you'll see that because the emissive texture is overlaid on top of that, all you can see is the green glow. And I have to admit, these green glowy eyes are kinda scary in the night. Maybe less so considering they're dressed up as giant walking Christmas presents. Well everyone, I think that just about covers everything for this episode. Hopefully now you should have a good understanding of animated textures using the MC Meta format and emissive textures using Optified. I really hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If there's any other tutorials or things you would like to learn how to do in the future, please let me know. I may be able to make a tutorial on that and help you out. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Or if you want to have a real discussion about this, you can either grab me on Twitter or join the Discord. You'll find all the links and all the information down below in the description. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Genuinely appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed this and have a good one.